So for today, we have verses uh, 35, 36, 37, and 38 of chapter 11 lined up. Let's start with verse number 35. Sanjaya uvachah etas chutva vachanam kesha vyasya kritanjalir vep man kiriti Namaskritva bhuya evah krishnam sag gad dam bhita bhita pranamya. So Sanjaya spoke. Having heard the words of Kesha, the crowned one, trembling, saluting with joined palms, Boying, overwhelmed with fear, spoke again to Krishna in choked voice. So let's take this up word by word. Sanjay Uvaj is Sanjay spoke. Etat, this, Shrutva. Uh, Shruti is hearing. Shrutva becomes having heard. Vachanam, words or vachan. Keshavasya, Keshav. Uh, is name of Krishna. So Keshavasya becomes of Kesha. Kritanjali is with joint palms. Uh, Vipman is trembling. Kiriti is the crown one. Kirit is the crown. So Kiriti becomes the crown one, which is referring to Arjuna here. Namaskritva having saluted or uh, saying mm -hmm. Namaskar to Bhuya again, a verily, ah, is spoke. Krishnam to Krishna Sag Gad Dam in a choked voice. Bhita Bhita overwhelmed with fear. Pranmay having bowed. So the translation becomes Sanjay spoke. Having heard the words of Keshav, the crowned one, saluting with joint palms, bowing, overwhelmed with fear, spoke again to Krishna in a choked voice. So let's chant it together. Sanjaya uvachah etas chutva vachanam kesha vyasya kratanjalir vip mana kiriti namaskritva bhuya evah krishnam sag gad dam bhita bhita pranamya so this verse um, that uh, Sanjay starts speaking again is very similar to the verse number 14 of this chapter where Sanjay had uh, described Arjun's reaction to the vision of the cosmic form. Now that was when Arjun could not talk as he was too stunned by the uh, cosmic form and therefore Sanjay had taken over uh, explaining what... Uh, uh, Arjun was actually viewing on the battlefield. The two important points to be noted here are that in that verse, uh, uh, Sanjay had referred to Arjun as Dhananjay. Dhananjay means jo, uh, dhan ki ko ajay karta hai or the winner of wealth. In this verse, he is referring to Arjun as Kiriti or the crowned one. The point is that Arjun is not crowned just now. He's not the king of any kingdom. He's uh, he doesn't. He's not really ruling. He's not a ruler. He's not a king. So he's yet to wear the crown. It's in the future. So probably suggesting to Dhritarashtra that Pandavas will win the war, especially when the Lord Krishna is himself is supporting them. And that person or that Kiriti, the crowned one, the one who is going to become the king is now prostrating before the Lord humbly and in fear uh, in front of the Lord and bowing down to him. So Sanjay starts describing again Arjun's reaction to the vision of that cosmic form. Arjun is struck with wonder and is overwhelmed with fear. Now this is the fear that is born out of respect and reverence. Arjun trembles, bows and surrenders to the Lord. It is a complete surrender and with palms joined in reverence and in choked voice, Arjun starts speaking 
Uh, and the second time when Arjun starts speaking, it is like a universal prayer. By that, what I mean is that this is the essence of all scriptures of the world. It is irrespective of whatever religion we are uh, following. In the prayer or, or in the uh, praise that Arjun starts showering from the next verse, for the uh, next uh, 10 verses actually, he is revering and respecting that supreme intelligence, that supreme God that is behind this beautiful, wonderful, magnificent creation of things and beings that we all actually dwell in. Let's move on with Arjun's um, to the next verse, which Arjun takes over. Arjun Uvachah Sane Rishikesh Tav Prakirtya Jagatharshatanyu Rajatecha Rakshansi Bhitani Deshodravanti Sarve Namasyanti Cha Siddha Sangha So Arjun spoke. Rishikesh, rightly the world is delighted and rejoices in your praise. Rakshas, demons, flee in terror in all directions and the host of Siddhas or the perfected ones bow. So let's take this up word by word. Arjuna Vach is okay. Arjun spoke. Sthane, in place or rightly. This is correct. Rishikesh is a name for uh, Krishna that uh, Arjun is using. We'll discuss it in the when we take it up tav your prakri kirtaya by praise jagat of the world praharshyati is delighted anurajyate rejoices cha and rakshansi is rakshasas demons bhitani are afraid or terrified disha is in all directions dravanti flee survey all namasyanti bow and Siddh is uh, the Siddhas or the perfected souls. Sangha is collection of. So Siddh Sangha becomes hosts of Siddhas. So the verse translates to Arjun spoke, Rishikesh, rightly the world is delighted and rejoices in your praise. Rakshasas flee in terror in all directions and the host of Siddhas or perfected ones bow. So let's chant it. Arjuna Uvacha Sani Rishi Keshata Prakri Kirtaya Jagat Praharshayat Anurajatecha Rakshansi Bhitani Deshodravanti Sarve Namasyanti Cha Siddha Sangha so, from starting from this verse onwards, for the next 10 verses, Arjun will praise Lord Krishna from various perspectives. He starts by addressing the Lord as Rishikesh. Now, Rishikesh means the Lord each of the mind and the senses. So, Sri Krishna is the sovereign master and Enlivener, he also enlivens everyone's, all the beings, the entire creation's mind and senses, and therefore he is being referred to as Rishikesh. The word with which Arjun starts, thane, or in place, or that means it's the right or it's the appropriate thing, it is also important because, you know, like if in a kingdom or let's say in a country, you accept the sovereignty of your uh, regent or your prime minister or your president, whoever is the head of the state. So there are certain set of people who accept that uh, uh, sovereignty of that person, of the king or the prime minister or the president. I'm using them interchangeably. It doesn't matter. So those people who accept that sovereignty delight in the presence of uh, that uh, the head, the king. And they praise the king and are happy in his presence. People who do not like the king, president, or the prime minister don't want to be seen in his presence. They don't want to be there. 
and the top ministers or the you know advisors to the prime minister or the retinue of ministers who are closest to the king or the regent are deeply devoted to the person that is immediately their head so in the verse arjun is describing the reaction of these three categories of persons when they are exposed to that overwhelming personality of the lord so normal humans people like you and me you know we delight and rejoice in lord's presence so when you uh, say shri ram or you say hari om or you sing a bhajan you feel so good so the lord serves as a source of radiance joy and bliss to us and we sing lord's praises and revel like uh, you know enjoy in the thoughts of that brahman the more evolved people that means people who are higher who are ahead of us in their spiritual journey or the siddh people they understand lord much more and therefore they bow down to him in reverence the wicked ones on the other hand the rakshasas or the ones with demonic nature are fearful in the presence of the lord and they want they flee from the presence of the lord now the rakshasas also we need to understand from a different perspective see the positives and the negatives everything exists within us so the positive vibes within us take us closer to the lord the negative forces within us actually are also within us but they take us away from the lord so when we say that the rakshasas flee in different directions it can be interpreted as the negative forces and tendencies are removed from us or the wicked thoughts are removed from us when we start thinking of that lord so it can be interpreted to mean that as well and i said wicked thoughts now why does wickedness occur in us uh anyone would like to answer that why do we do wrong actions incorrect actions or wicked actions to satisfy our vasanas yeah which actually lead us to uh, ego egoistic and egocentric desires see vasanas you will sublimate in any case those are your tendencies inherent tendencies which you have to overcome but when we only think of i me myself you know then we become uh, egoistic and we do things which are wrong also just because of our ego sent the desire has become an egocentric desire the vasana has become an egocentric vasana so once our mind is uh, attuned to the higher the ego is gradually removed from us and so also the selfish desires they give way to selfless uh, action and that detail uh, we have done chapter 3 4 and 5 and in that the evil forces run away from us and the mind starts delighting in the lord and because the ego is gone and so have the egocentric desires have gone our mind is quietened so we start dwelling in the quietude of the mind that uh, we attain with that let's move on to verse number 37 kasmat tin na na meran mahatman gariyase brahmano pyadikartre अनंत देवेश जगन्निवास तमक्षर सत्तर अर्जुन गोज ऑन टू से एंड वाई शुड दे नॉट बाउ डाउन टू यू ओ ग्रेट सोल ग्रेटर देन ऑल द प्राइमल कॉज इवन ऑफ ब्रह्मा इन फाइन आइट बींग ओ लॉर्ड ऑफ गॉड o abode of the universe you are the imperishable that which is beyond the manifest and the unmanifest so let's take this up word by word kasmat why cha and te for you na not namiran bow down 
Mahatman is the Sandhi of Mahan, Atma or exalted soul or great being. Gari essay, greater. Brahmana is of Brahma as in Lord Brahma. Api even Adi Kartre, primal maker, creator. Anant is without an end, infinite. So Anant here means when he is referring to Krishna as O infinite being, Devesh, Dev ka ish or Lord of Gods. Jagannivasaha, abode of the universe. Jagat is uh, uh, universe and uh, Nivas is uh, home. So Jagan Nivas becomes O abode of the universe from you, Aksharam, imperishable which cannot be split any further. Sat is manifest. Asat is uh, unmanifest. Tat that param supreme, which yat is which. So Arjun says, and why should they not bow down to you, O great soul? Greater than all, the primal cause, even of Brahma, infinite being, O God of gods, O abode of the universe, you are the imperishable, that which is beyond the manifest and the unmanifest. So let's chant it together. Kasmachatena nameran mahatman Gariya se brahmano pyadikartre Ananta devisha jaganivasaha Tvamaksharam sad sad tad param yad. So Arjun addresses here Lord Krishna as Mahatma or great soul and starts using adjectives that describe the Lord in superlatives. Let's take them up one by one. Adi karte or the primal cause so, Brahman has created everything that we see around us. And even the creator, Lord Brahma, is a creation or has come out or has uh, arisen from that supreme reality. Now, Brahma himself can create many universes. But you have given the power to Lord Brahma to create these universes. So, you are the creator of the creator. So, even the creator which we, uh, whom we worship as Lord Brahma is an expression of you. You remain the underlying reality, the substratum that supports this universe. And why should the people not worship you? It is only right that they should worship you because you are the source behind all the creation. So, the point is that why should the people not worship you? Everyone should worship you. So that is what Adi Karte, the word means and the context of the verse also I try to bring it out because then we will just continue with the, each of the adjectives. Anant, we all know, is without an end, infinite and uh, endless. So in the cosmic form you may recollect when we were reading that he mentioned seeing number of mouths, tusks, hand and feet and the cosmic form. Now the point is that the universe with all its objects and beings is still finite. The universe has a beginning and an end. So it will, it is created and it dissolves and all the beings also have a beginning and an end. But the substratum, the Brahman, which supports this creation is infinite, beginningless and endless. So that is what the word Anant refers to. Devesh is a lord of gods or the supreme god. The controller of all the lords and we just took the example of Lord Brahma. Now, Brahman or that supreme lord is with his laws, the entire activities that we see around us in the universe taking place. So laws of nature the law of karma, the law of caution uh, around us with perfect precision. They function infallibly. All this is happening because of that Brahman. 
So the ruler of that cre uh, of the creation administers these laws of nature through the celestial gods. But Brahman acts as the source and the maintainer of all the laws, the protector of these laws. And just as the fuel enables vehicles to fly on ground, as also the uh, airplanes to fly in the air, similarly, the same Brahman, the same uh, power enables, enables both the Bhutesh, we use that word, the Lord of Beings, and also Devesh, the Lord of the gods that we uh, say reside in heaven. So he is the Lord of gods. Jagan Nivas, abode of the universe. So everything and everyone dwells in the self. The best example here is that of the ocean. The ocean is the abode home, shelter of countless waves. The waves rise, exist and merge back into the ocean. They are the ocean all the time and they come back to the ocean making ocean the abode of the waves. Similarly, another example more uh, gross is that all the clay pots have clay as their shelter. All gold ornaments have gold as their shelter. They will come back and become gold. Similarly, the universe and all beings of the universe exist. Let me put it in correct sequence. Arise, exist and dissolve back into Brahman. Hence, Brahman is the abode, shelter and the home of the entire creation of all these varied no names and forms that we see around us. Aksharam is imperishable. In fact, uh, chapter 8, the whole chapter was, uh, it was called the Akshar Brahma Yoga, which was devoted to the yoga of the imperishable Brahman. So here, uh, we continue with the same meaning. The Brahman is imperishable, changeless substratum. So, uh, you know, the worlds come out of him and the worlds go back to him. The magnificence or the completeness of the Brahman is not reduced, which is what we do in uh, chant towards the end of the, in the closing uh, uh, invocation or from the Ishupanishad. It's exactly the same thing. It has neither a beginning nor an end, which is in direct contrast to this impermanent changing world that we see around us which is perishable and so are all the experiences of the beings of the world which are impermanent, changing and perishable. Sat asat and in this context Arjun says that you are beyond the sat asat. Okay? That Brahman is beyond the sat asat. So let us look at the meaning of this uh, phrase. Sat as I mentioned was manifest and asat was unmanifest. Or sat is with form and asat is without form. So man, when we talk of a manifest or with form, it is something that we experience with our body, mind and senses. Unmanifest is something that we cannot experience. A very simple example is that in our devices, you know, mobile phones or gadgets that we use, the sat is like the hardware. So the actual device that we have in front of us. And Asat is the app or the software that you download, which enables the hardware to function in a particular manner. And the so this is the, the hardware is the Sat, apps are the Asat, and the two combined to give you the device that uh, make the device functional, okay? Similarly, we, because of our vasanas, which we do not see, our inherent tendencies, which are there in us, but we do not, uh, we are not able to see them or feel them. So they, they are our unmanifest programming, which are our desires or vasanas, and make us function in a particular manner, just as the app makes the device function in a particular manner. So this is what makes me different from you, and uh, from uh, different from another person. We have different set of vasanas. Now, beyond all this, when we come 
uh, reach the state of enabling the device. So there you need some form of electricity or electrical currents, be it in the form of an actual electrical uh -huh. charger or through your battery uh, operated, you know, those battery chargers. So those impulses, which you do not even uh, see in either the sat or the asat, that is what is being referred to as being beyond the sat and the asat. So that is what the, Brahm, the state of Brahman is. Similarly in us, that is the enlivening force that makes us function according to the pre-programmed uh, the vasanas that we have. And similarly, okay, um, I mean, if the, I'll try to give another example because these concepts are slightly subtle and we forget them the moment we stop thinking about them, actually. So if you have, let's say, gold, now five grams of gold is what you have. And out of this, you can make a necklace, you can make a bangle or a ring or maybe a biscuit, you know, five gram gold biscuit. So the shapes of a necklace or a bangle or a biscuit, they are all, they are manifested. They are forms that you can see, right? But when one form is available or is manifest, the other forms become unmanifest. So if the five gram of gold is converted to a necklace the necklace is manifest but the bangle biscuit etc are unmanifest but gold is beyond actually any of the shapes so gold is beyond the manifest and the unmanifest so in the same way brahman is that tat param or that supreme which transcends the manifested names and forms that we see across the universe in the various beings in the various things that are around us, that surround us, in which we live. So that is also important. Let's move on to the last verse for the day, verse number 38. <laughs> Tvamasya Veshvasya Param Nidhanam Vetasi Vedyam Cha Paramam Cha Dhamma Tvayata Tam Veshva Ananta Rupa Arjun continues with the praises, you are the primordial God, the ancient being, supreme abode of this universe. You are the knower the, and that to be known. So you are both the knower and which is to be known and the supreme goal. By you, the universe is pervaded, O being of infinite forms. So let's take this up word by word. Form is you. Adi Dev is the primordial God or who existed before time. And Purusha is being, supreme being. Being, Purana is ancient. So Purusha, Purana becomes ancient being. Thvam, you, Asya, this, Vishvasya is of. Vishv is universe, Vishvasya becomes of universe. Param, supreme. Nidhanam is a board. Vedta. Now, Ved is the root of this word and Vedam. So, you know, uh, Ved means to know. So, Vedta means knower. Asi, you are Vedyam to be known. Cha and Param Supreme, Cha again and Dham is the shelter, goal, final center. Tvaya by you, Tatam is pervaded, Vishwam, universe. Anant is infinite, Rup is forms. So, Anant Rup becomes infinite forms. So the verse translates to, you are the primordial God, the ancient being, supreme abode of this universe. You are the knower, that to be known, and the supreme goal. By you, the universe is pervaded, O being of the infinite forms. Let's stand it together. Vamadi Devaha Purushaha Puranas Vamasya Vishwasya Param Nidhanam 
वेतासि वेद्यम च परमं च धाम तम वेश्वम अनंत रूप सो अर्जुन कंटिन्यूज डिस्क्राइबिंग एंड प्रेजिंग द लॉर्ड आदिदेव एन ईवल गॉड फ्रॉम यू एवरीथिंग अराइजेस और यू आर द अनमेनिफेस्ट रियालिटी फ्रॉम विच द एंटायर मैनिफेस्टेशन अराइजेस द मैनिफेस्टेशन एक्चुअली वी वर्शिप दीज आर द वेरियस uh powers that we worship as gods and uh, so you have the trilogy of the brahma vishnu mahesh brahma the god of creation vishnu the maintainer shiva the destroyer the, then apart from this we also have vayu the wind god agni the fire god surya the sun all the powers that we see in surrounding us we worship as gods so these all these gods the trilogy of creation maintenance and uh, destruction and the elements that we see around us are all manifestations of that one god that supreme god so here we must say that in again and i'm underscoring the fact that hinduism in a is a monotheistic uh, religion a lot of us are often face and this kind of a you know conversation that you know hinduism has so many gods so you get confused which ones to worship the point is that all these elements and all the powers that are manifest are infinite so we have a lot of uh, gods but they are all enlivened enabled by that one supreme reality and we worship these gods depending upon our vasanas our tendencies our pre programming our nature so we align with these gods and through in and through that we continue on our spiritual journey so um, i would like to uh, i mean i'm highlighting this point once again that hinduism is all these powers that we worship are actually sub powers of that supreme reality or these gods the demi gods have obtained their powers from that one god that is the hierarchy in the religion purush purana is ancient being so ancient uh, when we talk of it's on a timeline and brahman exists across time he is the most ancient nothing predates him and uh, as we have been discussing time is the in uh, is an interval between two experiences so for time to be measured it can only start with the second experience time does not exist in the first experience it is only with the concept uh, with the second experience that the concept of time can arise and brahman existed that god that supreme reality existed in the very first experience before time emerged hence brahman precedes time and is thus ancient param nidhanam so the supreme abode and with param nidhanam vishwas uh, vishwasya is you vishwasya so that means of the world so supreme abode or the ultimate dwelling so of the world so everything every one dwells in this self and not only like a museum piece you know so you go to the uh, new uh, the a national gallery or you go to the national museum so you have the harappan section and you will find a part of the harappan timeline which is kept as it is no when we are talking of the param nidhanam it means that the pot is being used so it is being used for cooking it is being rinsed and it is being used again so not as as it is you know it's not just kept there but all the experiences that are taking place in the world also reside in you so you are the supreme abode of everything and everyone and also the experiences that are happening with all of us with all these everythings and everyones just as the dreamer's mind so when i dream of something so my mind is the abode of my entire dream world similarly brahman or the atman is the abode of the entire creation all objects all beings 
and all experiences of the dynamically changing world and events so that is what the word uh, word vishva here means so you are the very home you meaning the brahman or lord krishna you are the very home substratum and supporter of the entire world and its happenings then we come to vedta you are the knower and vedyam you are to be known okay so um, now let me take this uh, one by one but they are related so see when he says you are the knower knower because the body mind and intellect whatever uh, is captured or whatever is understood by our gyan indriyas not only us but the entire creation they all actually come to you so you are the knower of everything through the body mind and intellect of all creation you are the aware you are the consciousness that becomes aware of all our gyan indriyas so our gyan indriyas are enabled by you and it is because of you that we know you and that that knowledge flows back into you so in that manner you are that knowledge principle that underlies and enables all the knowledges that we gain in the world so that in that manner you are the knower now when, let's come to to be known with them to be known you only are to be known so again we come back to our body so we consist of the gross body the subtle body and the causal body and the gross body is a physical body the subtle body is our mind and intellect which control our emotions and thoughts and the causal body is the unfulfilled vasanas or our seed personality and that software programming you know, that we were talking about beyond all this is that chit or the pure consciousness that we have which is represented by om so the gross body houses the subtle and the causal bodies and the pure consciousness we know the gross and the the gross body we know fairly well subtle bodies also we know the causal we know maybe to a little extent but the pure consciousness that uh, brahman we know most of us miss it that is what is to be known to be investigated and to be realized by every human being so what arjun is saying that you in your expression are the knower and you only are to be known when we uh, attempt to transcend the body mind and intellect and this is what we actually covered in great detail in chapter 9 the raja vidya raja guhya yog or the yog of royal knowledge and royal secret that this is the greatest secret and this is the greatest knowledge that exists the knowledge of the self then uh, the last uh, term that he uses is param dham ultimate goal the highest and noblest center brahman is the ultimate goal that a human being can aim to achieve and it is beyond all physical emotional and intellectual experiences arjun also acknowledges that god has the power to create ananta roopa or an infinite number of forms which we experience as vishva uh, again vishva has to be taken in the concept of a dynamically uh, changing environment so you pervade this magnificent universe in endless varieties of beings and forms and dynamically changing environment and some of these adjectives you may like to revise we had covered uh, started covering from chapter 8 onwards so chapter 8 akshar brahm yog chapter 9 raj vidya raj guhya yog and chapter 10 vibhuti yog so with that we will end today's session